Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the October 2023 sheet load of cards printable. I hope you'll stick around to see how they're made and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you the brand new sheet load of cards, October, 2023. And in that debut video, I told you how you could download this printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. If you do want to download this and you haven't seen yesterday's video yet, make sure to check out that description box below and it's the link right next to the debut video. Today I'm back to show you how I made my first set of cards and I am going to have some tips for you along the way, especially for this pattern paper piece which has a special instruction here on the sheet load. Also today, my team of collaborators is sharing their first sets of the month. Over on Instagram to see those, you'll just click on the link in the description box. And to check out my collaboration team here on YouTube, you can try that hashtag in the title. I'm crossing my fingers that it works for you. But if it doesn't, in the description box below, I have a playlist linked with all of their videos. I'll get those added ASAP or you can check out their direct links, which are down there as well. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. Yesterday, I did go over the main supplies that I'll be using, and I'll tell you about them later in the video. But as I get into the process, if I leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say thank you and welcome to my newest paper trimmer level members, Renee Cook and Natalie Daniels. Thank you so much ladies for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and sheet load of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. I'm going to get started today by cutting my papers which come from Cartabella's Fall Fun line. This is actually the front and back of the same sheet. I will be following the cutting guides today and don't forget you can download your free printable in yesterday's debut video. The first cuts I'm going to make are going to be rows off the top of the sheet. So if your paper does have a specific orientation, make sure you keep that in mind before you make the first cut. I'm going to cut two rows that are three and three quarters inches tall and one that is two inches tall. Now this sketch does leave quite a bit of leftover pattern paper, but don't worry, I do have some suggestions on the printable how you can use it, and later on in the video I'll show you how I did that. Once those rows are cut, we're going to take the top two and cut them into two pieces that are five inches wide. And don't forget to keep that extra, we'll be using it later. The bottom row is going to get cut into four pieces that are two and three quarters inches wide. And here's a look at the eight pieces you'll get from each sheet. Now remember, mine is double sided. If you have a double sided paper that goes well together, you could actually just cut one sheet and flip half of them over for your final cards. You would only yield four cards this way, but they would be super quick and easy. I cut that green polka dot paper in the exact same way, once again making sure to keep all of my scraps. 
Next, I brought in two pieces of cardstock for CS1. We're going to cut each of these into four pieces that are five and a quarter by four inches. To get started, I'm going to cut each piece so it's laying horizontal, and I'm going to cut columns that are five and a quarter inches wide. Then when I have four of those, I rotate and cut the two pieces that are four inches tall. This does leave you with some skinny strips left over. I hung on to mine. I like to make these into fishtail banners and put them behind sentiment pieces. I brought in the same color cardstock for CS2 and this is going to end up being the mats for the pattern paper and the sentiment piece. For this, you need one full sheet and then a scrap. I brought in a couple smaller pieces just so I can finish cutting piece B later. To get started, I'm going to take that full piece and rotate it so it's laying landscape and cut three rows, sorry, four rows off the top that are two and a quarter inches tall. When I have those four strips, they get cut into two pieces that are three inches wide and one piece that is two and a quarter inches wide. From this piece, I'm going to yield eight piece A's and four piece B's, which means I need to do a little bit more cutting for B. So that is where that extra piece comes in. Now you can definitely use smaller scraps if you have them. I just had a couple kind of medium sized scraps that I used to finish up mine. For CS3, you only need a half sheet for this, but this is also a good one to use up scraps if you have them. I grabbed a larger scrap of white from my stash and I cut this piece into eight squares that were two inches. I just cut two strips that were two inches and then pushed it from right to left using my two inch mark to the left of the cut line on my trimmer. And finally, I'm going to show you how I cut my cardstock for the card bases. This month calls for four sheets that I cut in half to five and a half by eight and a half that are going to yield eight card bases. Now, once you have those pieces cut in half, you could definitely fold them by hand, but I do like to make sure I get a nice crisp fold. So I brought in my mini score buddy, put a score line at four and a quarter, and then helped reinforce that fold with the bone folder. While I continue scoring and folding those, I have an extra special shout out. During the month of September, I had some channel members reach one year of membership. Their names are scrolling up on screen now, and I just want to take a minute to recognize them and say thank you for their continued support. Monthly support from my channel members helps keep me creating here on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I have a link in the description box below. Now all of the pieces are cut so we can start assembling the cards. Like I mentioned in the debut video yesterday, there are some special instructions when it comes to that pattern paper that's split across the front of the card. This is actually one matted piece, which is pattern paper B and CS2A together that we're going to adhere and then cut in pieces to split across the front of the card. Don't worry, I know that sounds complicated, I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to start by putting these two pieces together. I am just using my ATG today to keep everything nice and flat, and you'll see that those pieces have a nice brown border all the way around them. I finished putting those together, and before we go ahead and cut these apart to put them on the card front, I do want to go ahead and put my card front together.
So to do this, I'm going to take pattern paper A and CS1 and layer those together. While I continue working on that, I did think it would be a good time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today I would like to know, how do you get started on your sheet load each month? Do you download it on the first and get started right away? Do you wait for my process video? And if you do wait for the process video, do you kind of watch it once and then go make your set? Or do you craft along and pause and fast forward when you need to? I'm just curious what your sheet load process looks like since you get to see mine each month. I would love for you to leave your answer in that comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know you've answered and would like me to see it. I'm so looking forward to this one. Once I had all of those layers adhered together, I brought in my card bases. Before we can move on any further with the smaller piece, we do need to get our card front ready. So I added adhesive once again using my tape runner to keep this nice and flat and then center my pattern paper piece on the front of the card base. I have that nice brown border and then the nice olive green. Now it's time to cut up the layered smaller piece. Just like it says here in the special instructions, we're going to cut it in two pieces. We want to cut in two inches from the left, and that's going to be the outer edge, the outer edge of the mat, not the pattern paper. So for me, I'm going to put it in my paper trimmer and align that left edge with the two inch mark on the ruler to the left of my cut line. Now because there's not much room for me to hold onto the right side, I brought in that piece of scotch removable tape to temporarily hold it in place while I made the cut. Now eventually these two will be switched left to right. You do want to keep these pieces together. If you don't have removable tape to hold this in place, or you don't have that two inch measurement to the left of your cut line, what you can do is rotate your piece 180 degrees before you make the first cut. And then you're gonna cut two inches off the right side now. When you put them together off to the side, you will want to go ahead and rotate them back around, but again, keeping them together. Now, because my pattern papers don't really have a top or bottom, I just go ahead and bring them in make the two inch cut on the right and just keep those together. I don't have to worry about rotating them, but I wanted to tell you about that just in case it would be helpful for you. Now that those are all cut, we can start putting more pieces on the front of our card bases. I did go ahead and bring in the mat for my sentiment, but we won't be putting those on right now. Instead, we're gonna take a set of our smaller pieces and get those adhered down. To do this, the small piece goes on the left, aligned with the edge of the card base, and the matted part, or the border, goes to the inside of the card. Now for this first one, I am just eyeballing this. So I put on the left piece, add adhesive to the right, and then I put it on the card and just try to get it as straight across as possible. That first time it was a little off, so I adjusted it. And now I'm gonna take the brown mat and put that centered between the two. This is gonna help you if you do it in this order, it's gonna help you get more even borders. I did have to pause for a minute to reload my ATG, but here's a look at the first card with those pieces added to the front. The fronts of my cards will have two different looks since I have two total pattern papers. I did put together this next one once again, just eyeballing it. But if you don't feel comfortable just doing this by sight, I do have some helper suggestions for you. If you are a subscriber who likes to print out your sheet load while you use it, make sure that you always print it at full size or 100%. That way the sketch on the front is gonna be the same size as your A2 card. So now with this one, I can add adhesive to the back of the left piece, put my current card base up to the printed card, and that will help me align it right there where it shows on the sketch. This is gonna help you if you do want to get more exact placement. 
Unfortunately for the piece in the middle, you won't be able to hold anything up to the printable, but now that you have on those two outer sides, it's a lot easier to get that centered and the line straight left to right. If you don't print your sheet load out, I do have a helper for you as well. For this, I am using a T ruler, which are two pieces of plastic put together in a 90 degree angle, and one of them does have a ruler on it. But what I'm gonna do is kind of figure out if I put the T ruler at the edge of my card, how far up on the card that the ruler should go to get the placement of that left piece where I want it. I did figure out that my ruler was pretty much aligned with the top edge of pattern paper A, and so I put that first one down in the corner, then I added adhesive to the right piece, made sure my ruler was up against the corner of the first pattern paper, and then I could place the second one on the right side, just making sure to butt it right up against the edge of that ruler. Now if you don't have a T ruler, you could definitely use a regular one. Just make sure you have somewhere across the top of your card to pay attention to the alignment of the ruler since you won't have the piece on the left kind of holding against the side of the card. Hopefully one of those tricks will work for you. I put together the remainder of my card fronts off camera and I just use the eyeball it method. Let me know which you prefer in that comment section below. Now it's time to stamp the sentiment pieces. So I brought in my mini Misty and those two inch squares of white cardstock. For my sentiment today, I'm using Pretty Pink Posh's Thoughtful Greetings stamp set. And the one I chose reads, Sending Happy Thoughts Your Way. I'm gonna be stamping with Sweet Basil ink. It matches the green card base and the green in the pattern paper. I took a minute to get the stamp set up, trying to get it centered and straight on that square. Once I picked it up with the door of my Misty, I did check for alignment with the grid and it looked pretty good. So I went ahead and inked it up and stamped it. Now because I did set it up with the Misty, I am able to quickly ink up and stamp the remaining seven pieces. To add some extra decoration and take up some of the white space on my sentiment piece, I brought in the Autumn Vibe stamp set from Not Too Shabby and using that little sunflower at the top, I set this up in the corner, the upper left corner of my sentiment piece. To bring in some of the yellow from the pattern paper, I am using Tailored Expressions Pineapple Ink for the sunflowers. And once I ink up and stamp the first one, you'll see how cute it looks up there in the corner. And now all I'm gonna do is rotate that 180 degrees so I can get the sunflower down in the lower right hand corner of this piece as well. I just like how it takes up that white space and again adds a little extra decoration. And because it's set up in my Misty, I can quickly finish stamping all of the sentiment pieces. Those were all stamped in a flash and now it's time to get them put onto the card fronts. Now this is definitely a place where you could use foam tape on these to give the card some dimension and give the sentiments a lift. But as I mentioned before, I am trying to make these nice and flat for mailing. So I did just use my tape runner and added this centered to the brown mat. I added the rest of these until all eight cards had a sentiment on the front. And now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with some of the leftover pattern paper. On this month's printable, I do give you some suggestion of what to do with the leftover pieces. Now because my card bases are that sweet basil, I want to add a piece of white to the inside to help my personal message stand out. So off camera, I cut some scraps of white cardstock to five inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall. I'm gonna get started by putting a fishtail end in the two inch wide strips. To help me be able to hold on to these while I'm doing the punching, I didn't cut them apart just yet. Instead, I punched each end, and when I had all of those done, I brought in my trimmer and cut these in half. My pieces ended up being right at three and a half inches wide, so I cut it at one and three quarters inches. If you don't have that punch or a similar one, you can definitely cut the fishtail by hand, or you can also just maybe cut these at an angle. I just like the fishtail look, but it's definitely optional. 
Now it's time to make use of some of that paper from the bottom of each sheet. For this, I cut two rows that were a half inch tall, and I'm going to end up cutting these into pieces that are five inches wide. And behind the scenes tip, I actually cut them just a little bigger than five inches, more like five and an eighth. Once I had eight of those, I brought back in the white cardstock for the inside of the cards, and I added these to the bottom. For the green polka dot one, I added that about an eighth of an inch up, and for the sunflower, since it already had a lot of white in the background, I added that right at the bottom of the piece. Then I added the fishtail pieces up in the upper right hand corner. I did leave about an eighth of an inch to the right of white. And for these, whatever pattern was at the bottom is the fishtail I chose for the upper corner. Now, like I mentioned before, I cut those strips at the bottom just a little bit wide and that was just to ensure they filled that white cardstock all the way across. So I just brought in a pair of nonstick scissors and quickly snipped off the excess. Then to place these on the inside, whatever pattern was the two little pieces or the split up piece is the pattern that I would put on the inside. So for that first card it was the sunflowers and for the second card it was the polka dots. I continued decorating and adding those pieces to the inside and normally I finish off with some bling on the front but because the pattern papers were pretty busy and had lots of decoration I was all done with today's card set. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created my first set of cards using the October 2023 sheet load of cards and got a few tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget now to visit all of the collaborators creations by using the links in the description box below. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.